Hello family, friends, fans. It is C-Man. How y'all doing? Uh, this video is actually going up uh, very quickly because I had two questions uh, from you uh, people that apparently viewed my channel, which is great. Um, and like I said, I'm happy to answer those questions. Uh, first and foremost is uh, just to make sure that you guys are able to get the, the response to this, uh, your questions as quickly as possible. I suggest... Uh, you, I think you hit subscribe, or I think you hit subscribe, and there's an option under the subscribe button that allows you to receive the email when I post a new video. And I think that'll help because if I forget to like uh, message you, like there's a new video up. I don't know. You may not know. You may not visit very frequently. Um, so this is uh, the response to a couple questions. The first uh, question was. Um, from a guy who said his name is uh, Lewis, uh, goes by Rocky Balboa two one one, and um, anyway, you uh, were asking me uh, that you you said you're a senior in Texas right now, and you said you were thinking about taking the first two years off uh, before medical school to work as a medical scribe. So what should you study during that time? Uh, my biggest thing would be that. You should basically just, uh, there's a couple USMLE study guide books. One's called USMLE, or First Aid, I'm sorry, First Aid for USMLE. It's probably one of the best ones for step one at least. And I would suggest uh, reading over some of that stuff while looking up like what it, you know, what the stuff is talking about. Because when you, obviously if you haven't taken the first two years of medical school, when it's talking about a lot of the questions and stuff, that or a lot of the topics it's covering, you're not going to really comprehend too well. So I'd suggest moving through that and getting a really basic concept of what boards is like and everything. And then uh, start supplementing that uh, knowledge as you've read over that a couple of times during those first couple of years or hopefully more. And you've read up on some of the stuff and tried to understand it yourself. Then when you get into medical school, those topics will make a lot more sense, number one. But number two, you'll also have studied for a very difficult part of medical school, which is step one boards. That would be my suggestion to you. There, uh, which also kind of brings me to my second uh, question was from uh, Jayala, <laughs> I guess, uh, Jayala221. Two, two um, he was asking me about, uh, could I do a, a video log on what supplemental books uh, for which courses I used there during my first two years of medical school. So for both of you, I would suggest first aid. Uh, but try to get a cheap version of an old old one and then if you're not an old old one but like maybe the most recent edition or second most recent ed edition because if you want to rebuy it uh, then like when you get later you can put the money into like the most recent version they don't change that much over time just to tell you so don't think like you're getting something special if you get the most recent edition uh, now, what other supplemental materials? I mentioned in my last video, and I'll mention it to, to Jayala as well. Uh, questions. <laughs> Getting questions during the first two years of medical school is very important. USMLE World or Kaplan QBank are the two most popular. As I said, I liked and preferred USMLE World more, but that doesn't mean you will. Try to get a flavor for both. They usually have a trial or at least a version that you can kind of see, and that will help you. A couple other supplemental materials I, I kind of have here. Uh, this is, uh, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, advertise any brand, but these are the ones that I use specifically. Uh, clinical microbiology made ridicul ridiculously simple. I'll get, give you another look at that. Clinical microbiology made ridiculously simple. I highly recommend. That was one of the best texts uh, supplementally that I used during the first two years of medical school. Uh, it was fantastic. It usually only comes into play about the second year of medical school, but it is great book because it makes it so much better uh, to understand it has a lot of mnemonics and things that help you to really understand what organisms are doing and keeping your viruses straight and all this other crazy crud because I found that that was a very difficult part to keep straight in my head <clears throat> another there's another one called uh, I think neuroanatomy or something made ridiculously simple it's from the same uh, group uh, that does the Raid Ridiculously Simple books, that's another very good one. I had a very good neuroanatomy course, so it was already something that was good in my medical school, but that's a very good text. Uh, another one, uh, Lippincott's does a series for biochemistry, 
and uh, I would suggest that uh, as well uh, for biochemistry. I'm sorry, I'm not holding them up very long. Uh, anyway, so it's Lippincott's Illustrator Reviews for Biochemistry. And um, anyway, that really helped me a lot because the there, it has a lot of illustrations in here, a lot of pictures, a lot of stuff. It's really in depth though, and it may not be exactly what you're looking for, but I found that it was very, very, uh, very good at, at you know including about just about everything that was talked about in class and doing really good uh, stuff that like it, it kind of explained things that I didn't quite understand. Now for anatomy, there are a couple ones. Uh, I had what was called Grant's Atlas. I couldn't find it uh, at this moment, but. Uh, it's called Grants, I believe, and it's like basically live pictures uh, of of uh, cadavers. I did not like Netters because it was cartoons. And Grants, what it did is, it, I think it, I think it's called Grants, but it broke it down. Basically, it's it's very good pictures, very well done pictures of um, of uh, actual cadaver specimens, and that helped me a lot more. I also used a, a, a textbook called Chung's. Uh, it's it's a, a part of the BRS, the Board Review series of books, and it's uh, Anatomy by uh, Dr. Uh, Chung, C H U N G. But that's because <laughs> Dr. Chung is the neuro or the anatomy professor at our school, so it's kind of hard to be like, you know, really objective about that because obviously he wrote a book and that's what we were taught. And, and how we were taught, so you know we'd get his book, and that's kind of, kind of how it goes. So those are the main supplemental materials I would suggest using. I don't think that it's too terribly important. Uh, embryology is not huge. Uh, basically, the most important things with with embryology is understanding its correlations with very large developmental structures. For instance, understand very well like branchial arches and pouches. Very important. Uh, doing the whole structure of the, you know, the facial formation as well as the, you know, the, the cranial nerves that innervate those particular branchial arches, all very, very inclusive in, um, in, uh, in embryology. And then certain developmental structures, such as how the kidneys or gonads form, is pretty important, as well as uh, the, the GI system and how it forms, specifically the intestines, because because of the way they rotate and that can mean stuff clinically later. So anyway, those are the texts that I used other than, like I said, the first aid is probably the best and then uh, first aid also has in it some stuff that it recommends. Each edition at the very end of the book has texts that it re recommends and it, it gives them a, a rating, like an A through F uh, rating. and it, they'll try to help you out with what what things that they find are most recent and are helping the most. Um, so other than that, those are the first two years of medical school. Third year, I explained some of that in the in the third year video. So I hope this all helps, guys, and if you have any more questions, just let me know and I'll try to do a video log on it. Thanks, bye.